Alright, hello guys. Today I'm going to be bringing you an update on the tropical disturbance that's in the Gulf of Mexico right now. Now, things aren't looking as good for it. It looks like it's not going to develop as much. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content. And also check out the links in the description and pinned comment. Now let's get right into things. We're looking at satellite imagery here. And you can see just in between Cuba and the, the Yucatan Peninsula. That's right about where our low pressure system is. And that's where our potential future tropical depression or it might just stay a disturbance is located right now even if it just stays a disturbance that doesn't mean you shouldn't pay attention to it because it's still going to bring a lot of rain to wherever it impacts now i wanted to mention that in the bahamas you can see there is another system there with a lot of red near the bahamas and that's going to be for a future video today i'm going to be doing that in a few hours for that system that could potentially become a hurricane for the east coast of the united states so that one's going to be a little bit more of a big deal than this one and again, we will make a video on that one later. Now, I wanted to show the sea surface temperature anomalies first things first. And you can see that we do have above average temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast. So things are very, very favorable for development along the East Coast and again in the Gulf of Mexico and for all of the Bahamas and uh, the Caribbean alike. Now, here's your actual temperature. It's a little bit low resolution, but I did hear requests saying to show it in Fahrenheit, and I did find a map that does have it in Fahrenheit here. So you can see temperatures are in the mid-80s there for the Gulf and in the lower to mid-80s along the east coast of the United States, which is war well warm enough for tropical development, uh, near 90 as you get close to Florida. So very, very warm sea surface temperatures for all of these tropical areas. Now... Looking at our tropical intensity index, you can see a whole lot of red, which means it's a whole lot of favorable conditions, highly favorable conditions for the entire Gulf of Mexico, pretty much the entire Caribbean and almost the entire East Coast there. So things are very favorable for for development within all of these regions. And that's really going to lead to a lot of problems over the coming month. We did mention that the NOAA outlook for hurricanes was calling for above average hurricanes and tropical storms and all sorts of tropical activity and we still haven't seen much action in August so it was very surprising to see that they still think it's going to be an above average year because that was updated about around mid-August or you know kind of around the 10th so that's very surprising to hear from them that means that they think things are going to get going really really uh, a lot in in September in this later portion of August and, and this is why because we have such favorable conditions that once things do get going uh, they can get going a lot here in the near future. Now, looking at your Saharan dust layer here, you can see there's not a lot of Saharan dust at all in anywhere near the Gulf, the Caribbean, the East Coast. So we're basically in the in the clear as far as the dust is concerned for the for the Western Atlantic for the most part. So th those aren't really going to interfere with the development of storms. Now, wind shear as well. We have basically none for the Gulf and the East Coast. So Basically, these storms are going to be able to do whatever they want, and that is not a very good sign at all. When tropical storms have very favorable conditions and there's nothing to counter that, this is really bad news, and we could see some very strong storms develop in the near future. I don't know if either of these two will become major hurricanes, but we do have the ingredients in place for that to potentially happen in the near future in the coming weeks. Now, we're going to be looking at our cyclonic relative vorticity once again. Uh, according to the European and the GFS model, we're going to be starting with the European though. And we're going to be looking at this in three different frames just to see where these have the storm hitting. Now, actually, by this point, it is in the middle of the Gulf. And you can see on the European yesterday, we did have those oranges and reds already showing up, which means they're not calling for as much uh, vorticity at this point today. So for this one, we don't really see as much chance for development as we did yesterday. But you can see by the second frame here, this is by Friday morning. You can see that it is located off the coast of Texas, which is a little bit further west than we had things looking yesterday, which is very interesting. Some of those reds and yellows finally showing up, so we will see some development potentially by this point Friday morning. And then you can see by Saturday afternoon or around noontime, we do have it making impact in between Texas and Louisiana. And, and yesterday, I think we had this one hitting central Louisiana, so this is a quite a bit further west than we had things yesterday showing so texas could get impacted a lot more than we were first anticipating especially with rain which you'll see 
In the next frame here, we're looking at the European total rainfall, and you can see the numbers on the screen, that is inches. So a lot of coastal Texas there, you can see one to even, and the dark reds closer to four inches there. So a lot of Texas could get some heavy rain. One inch of rain is a lot, guys. I don't, people underestimate it, but one inch of rain is a lot, two inches of rain is a lot, and anything in between is a lot. But we do have some areas showing the potential for five inches plus within those brown shades. Some of it is offshore, but then for some portions of Louisiana, we do have some brown color showing up. Now, this thing looks to make impact, again, in between Louisiana and Texas, but then shoot to the east and basically skirt along the entire Gulf Coast there and head into a lot of portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and even the panhandle of Florida, which isn't on frame, but they're expecting upwards of two inches as well, just like this entire coast. If it does this, this is basically worst case scenario. Development aside, this is worst case scenario as far as the track, just because of the fact that all of the Gulf Coast would be affected basically eastward of in between Louisiana and Texas there and all going to be expecting one to two inches plus a lot of three inches showing there showing up there for coastal regions. So we could see a lot of flooding wind as of right now, as long as this thing doesn't develop more than we're expecting should not be a big concern. Wind with this one is looking like maybe 10 to 15 miles per hour winds along the coast at this point. Again, it could be more than what we're expecting right now, but as of right now, it looks like 10 to 15 mile per hour winds with maybe 20 to 25 mile per hour gusts, which can cause some minor damage, but really for the most part, that is no concern as far as tropical activity is concerned. That is very weak winds for a tropical uh, system, but we do have these heavy rains, which is going to be the biggest concern with this one, it looks like. Now we're going to move on to the GFS, and you can see it does have a bit more vorticity there, just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Some of those reds and yellows showing up, that is where we're expecting this thing to start developing. And then it kind of weakens off a little bit, but it is approaching Louisiana by this point where those yellows are. That's where it looks to be located. This is Thursday night, so tomorrow night, pretty late tomorrow night. And then you can see it makes impact with Louisiana by Friday morning or Friday noontime with those reds showing up. So that's when we're expecting impact according to the GFS. And here's your total rain according to the GFS. You can see we're still expecting one to maybe two inches possible for Texas, but it does make impact with more of the eastern regions of Louisiana on this one. So this would be best case scenario for those eastern regions of Texas as you're not going to get quite as much rainfall on the GFS model, but still one to one and a half to even two inches of rain is possible. Wherever those red colors are, that's where two inches is expected. So there is a few isolated areas of two inches of rain, but really for the most part, the European had widespread two inch rains. The GFS has isolated two inch rains, but for Eastern Louisiana and inland areas, this GFS model has the worst case for you guys as this one is going to bring a lot of rain, as you can see, to Mississippi, Arkansas, northern Louisiana, as this one isn't going to have it skirt along the coast. This one's going to have it straight, head straight inland and bring two to three inches of rain for a lot of Mississippi, a lot of Arkansas, and a lot of northern Louisiana. So this is going to be a much different uh, look than what we had on the other models, obviously. Now, here's my official forecast for this one, the tropical disturbance. Now, as you can see, this is for the next five days. But really, we're looking for this one to make impact probably later in the day, Friday. That's what I would say about right now. Any for, anytime from noontime till Friday night, that's when we would expect this one to make landfall with one of these areas. But you can see the cone of uncertainty is still very wide. And it heads to the Florida panhandle, not because I think that it's going to curve that much and hit that area. I think that it is going to make impact somewhere in Texas or Louisiana there. But again, the possibility for it to just skirt along the coast and then hit into Florida. That's why we have that weird elongated shape heading towards the Florida panhandle because the center of low pressure could head directly eastward and impact a lot of areas in coastal Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. But again, all of these areas could expect the possibility for two to three inches of rain, which is enough to cause flooding for some areas. But right now it's located in the Yucatan Peninsula and we'll have to see what it does once it gets into the middle of the Gulf and really has that potential to develop more and more 
but it might not. It might just stay a disturbance, but again, that doesn't mean we won't see rain because as of right now, the models aren't having it develop and we're still expecting two to three inches of rain for a lot of the coastal regions of the Gulf of Mexico still with without the, the major development here. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tropical update. I might be making more on this system. I probably will as we see it head into the middle of the Gulf, probably tomorrow and maybe even the next day. We will have some brief updates on this one. This was kind of a longer update because we did have some major changes in what we're expecting here. The track doesn't look too different. The track is staying the same, but the impacts felt are a little bit different. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video, and I hope that you guys stay safe with this storm and pay close attention to the updates on this one because it could change a lot, obviously. These are very unpredictable storms, and you never know what they're going to do, certainly. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one.